What's up, everybody? My name is Sully Lupke. This is John Six. This is Guys With Eyes, episode 31. Because we missed a week. That's yeah. Guys, I'm, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. Yeah, we'll talk but all about it. I'm telling you what. <laughs> we've had an epic two weeks, and we are so happy to be here to share it with you. John, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing great, man. How about you? It's so good to see you, man. You're Fine. all freshly shaved up, like literally yeah, your arms, I'm your legs. I'm looking like you a little bit. Not quite as tan, but I was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, you were. You were dark. I didn't even oh, recognize you on stage, dark. bro. It was insane. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, dude, I told you in, the, in those comments, I had so many people. I've known for multiple years yeah. at this point. I'm yeah. like, hey, it's like, it's it's John from the, the first form tent. Yo, <laughs> if you haven't seen, so John, went, we've been talking about prep leading up um, to his, his big old stage time, right? And like, literally, I saw the post and I'm like, who is this man? <laughs> right? Like freshly shaved head, trimmed beard, all mm -hmm. tanned up. This man's a redhead. This boy don't want to get tan. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was the first time I saw him all bronzed up. Not <laughs> only that, but you looked absolutely phenomenal hey, on I'm stage. Sure. Like, and, and the video that was posted, I was like, damn, this dude, <laughs> he went out and got it. Second place, right? Yes, sir. Ooh. Too easy. Thank Too you easy. so but much. But you put in the work. <laughs> That's the big thing. Um, and, and I couldn't be more proud just to know you and to see you work this hard, uh, all the way up until stage time. Like you earned that second place too. Like, thank that's you awesome. so much, dude. Yeah, it was, it was really, really difficult prep and it was, <laughs> it was probably, it was a little bit easier at some points, but harder in, in other ways. Wait, wait, wait. So doing yeah. something hard is hard. I mean, yeah. Oh, okay. It was real all right. All right. I just wanted to, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like having like a really big stretch goal is difficult and that's yeah. part of it. Absolutely. But on the other side of that, it was one of the best feelings that I've had in my life up to this point, completing that hard task. Like when you set that. a stretch goal and it's so what he means by stretch goal is it's something that's really hard to attain that you're not 100 percent sure that you're able to reach that. And when you do reach that, after you go something through something real hard. It's the best feeling in the world. Dude, that's I, what that's what I think both of us are riding on right now. <laughs> We're gonna get into my two weeks. Holy Christ, but that's but gonna be a real event. What what I say is that it's worth it. Like exactly. like even on the course when I'm running and I see people struggling, I'm like, hey, it's worth it. Like that that fire jump at the end, you're getting your medal at the end. It's always worth it. So like when you set yourself up and you set that stretch goal and you're like, Oh, I'm gonna have to become a completely different person. Literally. <laughs> to make this happen and then you go in and you work day in and day out and you get to the end and you feel that and it's just like damn it's worth it every time every time i've never every gotten to time. the end of something and like i've grown through it and even if i didn't do as good as i wanted to do right mm -hmm. um and gotten to the end and been like man i wish i wouldn't have done that work <laughs> it's just never happened for me nope like like through my high school uh, football playing days, baseball playing days, through my college days, through my um, through my military days, like any goal that I've set and it's made me grown as a person, like I, I, I've never been like, oh, that wasn't worth it. Like, no, like Not because of the lessons and the and the pain honestly has made me grown as an individual. And I know that's what you went through. Oh, absolutely, man. Uh, yeah, dude, there's there's days where you want to quit. There's days where it's like, man, why did I even get myself into this? Yep. But you remember or you remind yourself of your why, why you started. Like, what did you like? You got yourself into this. Why did you even put yourself through this? And getting through each of those times, each time you do that, you get stronger and stronger and you're able to do more and more each time. Um, but when you reflect on those on like on show day yesterday, whenever I was up on stage getting to show all my hard work like that is where you start to get the it's like, okay, this is what it was all for. This is why it was worth it because you get to that end goal. And it's like, it's like, man, I can, I can really do anything if I put my mind to it. And when you set those goals like this, like it helps you build momentum in to the rest of your life too. Because like, I know right now, because I just completed my competition, like I'm feeling really good. So I'm going to take that energy and put it into every other area of my life. Like I'm not going to be on a, uh, my nutrition training and supplements like I was for prep. So I'm going to put that energy into other areas to help push me forward there too. Mm -hmm. So you can ride that momentum. Yeah. And that's the big thing is like momentum, um, like bathing is recommended daily, right? Like, like you're going to take this momentum, take this flow, and you're going to start putting it into other areas of your life to kickstart that transformation process in other areas, right? So now 
we don't have to focus as much in the nutrition and the supplementation factor. But now you can be like, oh, I want to start reading more because I'm coming off a of prep brain. I'm going to be <laughs> able to put more energy and time and effort into reading the studies, the books, the everything that will benefit you in your career and as a human. And now that you have more energy and you're riding that momentum wave, it's the perfect opportunity just to keep on going jump head first and to use that momentum to create a new habit. Absolutely. Yeah, that is exactly what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Like you, I have the mindset of prep still. Like I'm still all go, all gas. Laser down. focus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And use that energy that you have to put into other areas of your life. Like don't let off the gas pedal because you just went through, like I went through 22 weeks of a diet for this. Ooh. 22 weeks. The entire time, like the day I got into customer service actually was the day that I started prep. Hell so it yeah, cool. it was. It was a nice little milestone then, huh? Mm -hmm. Good luck. Absolutely. Yeah, Love. no, it was a, it was a good, uh, good starting point for both. Yeah. Um, but I went through those 22 weeks with that mindset. I'm not going to lose that momentum is what I'm saying. I'm going to keep the same mindset that I had and... Now that I got a little extra time, I could just put that energy towards a couple other things. Yeah, and I and I know that you're going to be efficient with it. And um, that here's what the people don't understand, right? Is bodybuilding and the new skills that you're going to be building, the new habits that you're going to be able to be building, is that it's reps and sets, reps and sets over a long period of time. That's what got you on the stage. Reps and sets, reps and sets over a long period of time. That's what got me to the mountain ranges in the French Alps. That's what got me onto the competition floor for the monster games, right? It, it's not just like blink and you're there. It's the 22 weeks behind the scenes, the reps and the sets, the reps and the sets over a long extended period of time. That's what created this. And that's what's creating the momentum that allows you to step into something new in your life. Yeah, absolutely, dude. And with those 22 weeks is what got me there. And it's uh -huh. also the same thing for Sully for his races. Like, it's been years of work that's going to get us to where we're at. It's not just the one prep that I went through, too. It's like that's where every single day counts because over 10, 20 years, that's where you – like that's that's your life's work. Like dude, this is something I'm going to be doing for a long time. So it's like you don't just do it for short periods of time. This is a lifelong thing. It's, it's a thing that you have to do. Uh, consistently until you reach that goal and your goals may keep growing too. They better keep growing. Yeah. Um, Ed Milet, I was blessed to see him in 2020 before they shut the world down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I saw him at a conference and he was speaking and he's like, you have to take every single year of your life and put it into the new year. So you're not, tr you're not going to repeat yourself. You're actually supposed to like a caterpillar become a new person, right? So that you can get up and fly. But you do that by taking all those lessons, those trials, those tribulations from the past year, past years, mm -hmm. and putting it into the new one and then becoming that new person and continuing on from there. And I, and I think that's what you did. That's what I did. We've taken all those lessons from all this time that we've been working out, that we've been learning from people around us, mentors, friends, everything, and we put it into this. And now we can step into the new person after your competition. You get to create that next version of yourself. Absolutely. And I know we're both just getting started oh. too. I guess this is over and over. This process happens every single year until the day that you die. Mm -hmm. Like if you're not growing, then I and I don't think that you're living if you're not actually trying to get better in well, some way. That's where that quote comes from. I, I can't remember if it was Aristotle, Mark Twain, it might have been. But it's like <laughs> so many people, um, they die at 25 and we don't bury them until they're 75, right? Because mm -hmm. they stop living at 25 years old and they just exist. They stop growing. They stop learning new skills. They stop doing what actually makes them be alive and feel alive at age of 25. And we don't bury them until they're 25 or 75, 85, 95 nowadays. Mm -hmm. like, and that's like one of the saddest things for, like, for me to think about because there's so much potential that is wasted. Um, Les Brown tells the story about like, hey, the dreams and aspirations on, on your deathbed is just like, we came to you. Mm -hmm. And when you're sitting in your, in your, in the end of your days and like you think of like all the dreams and the goals and the aspirations and you just look at them around you and you just be like, damn, I had so much more left in the tank. I just didn't pursue it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where like 2024 has been so eye, eye opening for me because like I've determined that, hey. If I'm going to go out and like, I'm going to go out in my way. 
So that's why you see me doing more races. That's why you see me interacting with more people because like that's what lights my soul on fire. And that's the thing that I love to do. Um, not only fitness, like that's that's like a given. I've been an athlete my entire life, but like it's the connection with good people doing hard shit with good people. Like that's my uh, new life motto, but it developed in 2024. Absolutely. And some I noticed that change you this year and you've always like you've always been really good about this, but you just took it to another level Mm. of getting out and fucking doing it as much as you could, like being in it as much as you can, Mm -hmm. like what you love to do with the races. Like you've been in more than I've ever seen. Like since I've known you, you've done more this year than I've ever seen. So it's like you got to get out and freaking do it. Don't be scared of getting started. Like like a reason why a lot of those people die at 25, bury at 75 is because they don't chase those dreams. They don't start because they're scared of, oh, I'm going to fail right whenever I start, or I'm not going to be good, or it's going to take me too long, or, hey, I'm like, I'm literally going to work for 20 years and I'm not going to get to my goal. It's like, you can't, everybody has those thoughts. Everybody has those negative things that come in. You have to get started. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter if you're not going to be the best in the world ever at, like if you're a basketball player and you're not going to be better than Michael Jordan, that's okay. Like comparison is a thief of joy. We said it a million times, but like, just get started, start doing it as much as you can. Like experience is the best teacher. Man, that that time is going to pass anyways. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm either going to step into becoming a new version of myself and using that time to be like, man, I really suck at this. Mm -hmm. And over time, over time, becoming a new version year after year, year after year. And I'm going to get really, really good for what my potential in that particular area is. And 25 years from now, I'm going to be like, I'm glad I started. Or I can look at it the opposite way and just be like, ah, I suck at that. We're just going to leave it. And I don't work on it at all. And 25 years ago, I'm going to have like the, oh my God, what if I would have? And that's like the worst feeling to ever think because I've done that in the past. Like, what Mm -hmm. if I would have started 10 years ago? What if I would have done this? What if I would have done that? And it's just like, it, it really weighs on you. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm 31 years old. I don't want that feeling when I'm 78. I don't want that feeling when I'm 95, God blessing. Um, that like, I don't want that. So like every time I lean into, like every time something's hard for me now, I actually lean into it. I'm like, I'm going to do a little bit more of that because I have to. Mm-hmm. Now it's that feeling of like, wow, that's actually the thing that pulls me forward. That's actually what I want to attack. And trust me, there's a lot of holes in my game and I'm going to be fixing them. Uh, but it's going to take time. That's all it is. Like, it's going to take time. And I wish I had a better answer for people. Like, you know what? Like, reps and sets over a long period of time is how it gets done. So guess what? You're going to suck at first. Part of it. Everybody sucks at first. Yeah. There's very, very few things that people are good at right when they start. Even Mr. Olympia started at very, very lightweight. Mm-hmm. Like, if you think about it. like that, Absolutely. Like, before you put on a, an ounce of muscle, like, you start low. And like, sure, some of them are genetic freaks and stuff like that. And they might do one push up and blow up. But hey, they started with one push up. <laughs> like, like, that's just a part of it. Like, Absolutely. like everybody starts somewhere. And, you know, and unless you develop that skill, you develop those, that muscle, you develop that, those habits. Like, if you don't, you're in the same spot. Like, that's a problem. That's the big problem. It just takes a long time in order for you to get where you want to go. So, sorry, a little bit of a tangent there. (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's a a big aspect that people just um, try to avoid thinking about is the time aspect because Mm -hmm. it can be so different for each person too. Like where most people, it's going to be around 10 years that you're going to have to work really, really hard. You run what, uh, if you ever heard Andy talk about this, calls it the gauntlet. You got to run it for 10 years. You got to work at your craft for that long to master it completely. Uh, but sometimes it takes a little bit longer for some people. Sometimes it's a little bit shorter. Like, uh, actually, I just recently watched a video about Conor McGregor where he fought as a professional for 10 years in Ireland. Or he, starting from his amateur career up to pro, it took about 10 years. And he basically quit and went back to being a plumber in Ireland after that 10 years when it took a, like another year where he was 11 years in, then he got the call to the UFC and now he's one of the most famous people on the planet. But he kept during that year that he went back to plumbing, he kept working. So it took him 11 years where some people it's nine, some people it's eight, but now he's literally one of the biggest mega stars of all time. He just kept working. He went through 
that time. I think that time aspect is what a lot of people, uh, what it scares people off. And also people don't realize how long it actually is going to take. Man, because time can mess with you. And especially mm -hmm. in the social media age where every, every other ad is just like, you know, if you're not making a half a million dollars in sales, I actually just saw this one. If you're not mm -hmm. making a half a million dollars in sales in three months, you're doing it wrong. And it's like, oh, that's a lot of money, actually. Yeah. Like, I'd be happy doing like 2K a month for three months that would and be then nice. scaling it yeah. after that, right? And mm -hmm. like, that's the thing is like, this world right now is like throwing it like in your face. Like, if you're not doing this, you're failing when realistically, no, you're building, okay? <laughs> and, and then you're learning and you're building and you're learning and you're building over a long period of time. You're going to be getting more and more experience and money that follows experience that follows failing, right? That money will come to you eventually, but it's that, it's that decompression of the time period that people really want when realistically it takes so much longer than you think, but it's right there. You just have to keep on going. You don't know when you can wake up and all of a sudden there's something in your Shopify that just monetize like no other. Um, or you, all of a sudden it's like lightweight. Like you couldn't lift it two days ago and all of a sudden you just, everything lined up, your nutrition, your sleep, everything. And boom, you hit it, right? Yeah. Now you always have it. So absolutely, um, yeah, man, uh, trust me. I, uh, I had plenty of time to think about that when I was in my race in France. Oh, I got to hear about this, man. I've heard, you told me just a little bit. I know it was a crazy race, bro. you got to get in. Brother, let me tell you what. It was the worst <laughs> race that I've ever done. It was the hardest race that I've ever done. It was absolutely stunning. It was gorgeous, <laughs> especially when we went to the mountain like three times. Like they took us all the way up, brought us down all the way up again, like three different times. We had two swims on the first lap. Um, so the first, I was unprepared and that is 100% my fault. I, I thought that I had it locked down. Newsflash, didn't. So I had to adjust on the fly. We got it done. It just didn't go as smooth as what I wanted to. So um, this race in Morzine, it's in uh, uh, Morzine, France. It's in the French Alps, right? So the elevation, I was training out in Colorado. So the elevation actually wasn't too bad for me. Yeah. Um, the, the mountain climbing, I thought I was prepared for it. Wasn't prepared for it. Okay. So, you know. Noted. Next year, hopefully I'll be better. Um, but what I wasn't really prepared for was the first loop of the ultra was actually a 35K, which oh. equals out to about 18 miles. Mm -hmm. um, and normally a full on ultra is about 32 miles. So it was a little bit longer and a little bit more extended um, than what was expected. And also the way that the water stations were designed and, and set up to we're in the America right now we're really spoiled to where there's for an ultra there's probably about 10 11 water stations in france there was about five for the entire <laughs> race um, well the entire loop mm -hmm. so right away i was like oh no i have miscalculated and i guarantee you i've missed a briefing i didn't read what i should have and i was just like oh shoot this is 100 percent on me but we're gonna get this done um so the second lap was supposed to be about 15k news flash it was 25k so <laughs> we'll just run we, extra six miles there. <laughs> we call them Spartan miles. Um, so like, it's never what they say, but normally it's a little bit closer, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, not even <laughs> so, yeah. So it wasn't close. Um, so instantly, not only were we in scramble mode, um, just like trying to figure this out, figuring out how to handle this race, figuring out nutrition. I started cramping about two hours into a 10 hour race. <laughs> no. That's never ideal. Jesus. Um, my calf started cramping and I'm just like, oh no, these are hills. My calf is cramping already. It's like I need and, and then Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then all of a sudden my right hip flexor just started grabbing at about mile, I don't know, six or seven. Dang. And I'm like, great. We got, you know, 37 miles, 36 miles. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it got real bad. I went to a dark <laughs> place. Um, I don't know if you saw the video, but this is 100% true. When I came around that corner and we're coming into transition. So mind you, I did about 18K at this moment. Um, or 18, 19 miles at this moment. So a 35, 36 K. Um, and I came in and I was talking to my buddy, I got through an obstacle and I'm looking right at him and I'm like, dude, like I'm going to keep going. I have to keep going because transition area, you can hang out. They have food, they have snacks, they have yeah. your transition bag, everything. And I'm like, dude, I have to get out of this transition area as fast as I can, because if I stay there, I'm going to quit. <laughs> like I, I said that it's on camera. And, and like, as I'm running back, I'm just like left foot, right foot. 
Like, cause that, that's where my mind was. It's just like, okay, I want to quit so freaking bad right now. Like that, the first lap was the, went as bad as it possibly could. Like 100%. That's the worst I've ever felt on a race. And I'm only halfway through. Yeah. And well, I guess a little bit over half because the second lap is a little bit shorter. Um, but I, I looked at my friend and I'm just like, dude, Jay, I have to get out of here as fast as possible or I'm going to quit. And knowing that is the power is like knowing where I'm at mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Cause I got real close to God. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but knowing that, Hey, I want to quit. This is where I talk about leaning into hard things, right? I want to quit right now, but I'm not going to, I'm going to put my left foot in front of my right foot and I'm going to keep going and I'm going to lean into this pain. Trust me, my calf was screaming at me. Yeah. My hip flexors were screaming at me. My quads from the climbs and the downhills. My feet, it hurt. <laughs> but leaning into that pain and knowing that if I keep on taking one more step and then a step after that, I can get this race done, that's the power right there. So I knew it. I'm just like, boom, boom, boom. Spent 11 minutes in transition, hit the water, hit the magnesium actually, trying to get those, those yeah. cramps away. And... We went out there and we finished the race. Tore up my hand a little bit. Uh, mainly, you know, <laughs> like overall physically good except for the cramps. And like I, I want to say survived, but finished. Like I did more than survive. I finished a race that had over a 50% DNF. So um, did not finish, That's right? Crazy. They pulled yeah. so many people off the course. There's people that were cramping galore. There was people that... We're getting altitude sickness. That's how high they freaking took us. Okay. There's people getting altitude sickness. God. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> but it made for some epic photos. Uh, but there are so many people that didn't make it. I am proud to say that I did finish the uh, ultra world championship race. So um, even though it wasn't at the pace that I wanted because of how ill prepared I was and on me, I was able to finish the race and not let it beat me. And that's like one of my most proudest moments of all of my Spartan races. Dude, that's incredible, man. For real. Like that, that is so powerful what you're talking, what you're talking about with going around that corner where it's like, all you want to do is quit at that point. And you know, like, like you've been through it before where you did take a little break. You rested a little mm -hmm. bit in that pit and you quit because that's all you could think about whenever you took the time to yep. relax. It's like sometimes when you're in that pit, when you're in that darkest, deep, like deepest, darkest point. Like that's where you have to just keep moving. You have, you cannot stop to take a breath to relax or you will quit. You will crumble. Mm -hmm. And you learn that from past experiences. Yeah. In, in 2017 at the Hawaii ultra, I actually, I had my abdominals. They just cramped up, dude. And when your abdominals lock up, like there's nothing you, you can do. You, you can yeah. You can't anything. You, yeah. And with, with Spartan obstacles, like you can't go over and it just locks up. Mm -hmm. Right. So in 2017, I actually DNF'd an ultra in Hawaii. and. Like I learned on, I leaned on that experience and I learned like, oh my God, it's because I got in the transition and I just stopped, right? Like I was just like, and like my mindset before the, before I even got into the, into the, the festival area is what we call it. Mm -hmm. When I was in Hawaii, it was like, I'm fucking done. <laughs> and here you can hear it on camera. I know I want to be done. I have been done in the past. And I'm like, no, I have to keep moving. I have to keep moving. And like, that's all that was in my head was just like, I have to get through this transition area and I have to get back out on the course. Because if I'm on the course, I know that I'm going to be able to finish. But I have to get back on the course. And that's what I did. Oh, yeah. That's what I did. And that's where we talked about using momentum mm -hmm. and putting pushing yourself into new things. Like, I was going to the same thing, but I used that momentum, the little momentum that I had, baby, because I was going slow. It didn't matter. I was going slow, but I was going forward. And I used that momentum and mm -hmm. it pushed me into greatness, honestly. Because Absolutely. now, like, like Andy talks about um, mastering the bitch voice, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that bitch voice was talking, talking real loud. I know I got tonight, really I got tinnitus in my head and my ears, so I can't hear things a lot. <laughs> uh, ringing, but yeah, yeah. But trust me, I could hear it. I could hear it. Quit. It's okay. Go get some pizza. Like, go get some ice cream. Like, whatever. We're in France. Go get whatever you want. Didn't let it happen. I still got my pizza though. <laughs> oh, of course. But I had my to. I had my belt buckle with me first because I made sure mm -hmm. to finish get it done, and then I got to go eat some pizza. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and hey, I, that pizza tastes extra good whenever you when you finish. It was the best pizza I had since I lived in Sicily. 
Oh, it was really? oh, dude, it was fantastic. Oh, I guess I mean being out there in France, freaking, they got some good stuff. I mean, I tell you, dude, I, like being a world traveler, it's really cool. But mm -hmm. like, then you like find something that like tastes so good in another place of the world, and it's like shit. It's like, okay, I can't have but like, this. but like the way that they make pizzas, like you know, it was like seventeen euro, and I'm expecting like you know like a big American sized pizza, right? But no, it's like a kind of like more of a personalized pizza to where like I mean, we just. We eat more than Europeans. <laughs> but, uh, so to me, it's a personalized pizza. Yeah, that's just and fun. it was, it, it, dude, it was absolutely fantastic. So uh, I was really happy with that, but I was more happy that I dominated the bitch voice and I got my dog. Hell yeah, dude. Yep. And that, that was just race one. I actually had a day to rest and then I did two more races, but those are, <laughs> oh, dude, those were lightweight though. Crazy. Those yeah, were lightweight. Was, I went we were just getting the lactic acid. Yeah. <laughs> we were just, we were just, you know, going for a shakeout run. Exactly. That's all we did. Yeah. So I ended up actually with an ultra effective weekend is what it's called. So I did an ultra, then I did a super and a sprint all in one weekend. Damn. So, um, I was also there. My friend that was with me, Jay. He did the beast on Saturday, so I ran on on Friday. He ran on Saturday, so I was able there to support him, like he supported me, to take some content for him, things like that. And then we ran together on Sunday, which was really awesome because it really fit in that bucket of do hard shit with good people. Yeah. So it it was such an overall great experience. Um, I mean, I got to I got to see the Palace of Versailles. Ever since I was a kid, oh, I wanted I, to see. Yeah, it. I saw that yeah. post, dude. dude. That, like, I I remember seeing that in the history books mm. whenever I was growing up. Too. Yeah, and, and like, I got to stand in the gateway of the mm. Hall of Mirrors, and I'm like, dude, this is literally so much better. And so, since like I had, uh, I think it was AP European History, it was either my sophomore or junior year, <laughs> and I was just like, that's where I want to go. And I missed out on it the first time I was in Paris, and I didn't miss out it on this time, and I'm so happy, like. It, it was so much more fulfilling and better than I could even imagine. And, and I, I wish I could have spent like two full days there because we barely even got to the gardens. And I'm just like, I just enjoy, I love history. So I just enjoyed all this history. And then um, we had our adventure with an electric car. I, I mistakenly booked an electric <laughs> car on accident. So like we had to stop a lot more than expected when we're driving from Paris to the French Alps. But that's okay because it allowed us to get out. It allowed me and my friend Jay to have some good, great conversations outside the car as we're waiting for this car to charge at these nice little gas station um, shop at things that they have um, in Europe because they're kind of all over the place. But it was always a truck stop. So we got to do a big laps around and we got our steps in and we were enjoying the sunshine and enjoying the company. And it was like it was one of the greatest experiences of my life for traveling wise. Be all because we had to stop more often for this electric car. So um, honestly, uh, don't get an electric car if you're driving a long ways. <laughs> <laughs> you have to charge it every couple <laughs> hours. <laughs> but the, if you do happen to do it, it allows for a better experience if you have a co-pilot because you guys can come become closer, have great conversations and things like that. So we definitely took advantage of that. Um, and it was it was really, really fun get to get out and see more stuff as well exactly France, exactly it? so um and we strategically found our our charging stations so that <laughs> when we got up in the alps it was a little bit more difficult because they don't have a lot of charging stations up in the french alps <laughs> um as we found out but actually a really fun story after our ultra we had to find a charging station right so we found we finally found one that actually worked and across from it was this nice little burger place okay. dude and it was it was so phenomenal. And we were just like, wow, this is a great little place. We sat down. We talked to the chef while he, co while he cooked his our burger. Mm -hmm. Like he asked us exactly as he's throwing the ingredients on. He's like, do you want bacon? Like things like this, right? <laughs> what kind of cheese? Local That's cheese. Lo yeah, local cheese, sharp cheddar cheese. An experience that I've never had in the United States. Or an experience I've never had in Italy. The experience I've never had in India. I was able to have in France like in the middle of the Alps with this little burger shop. He owns it. He operates it. It was the chef. He made the burger in like a burger processing thing because you have to have a fresh burger in the, in, in uh, France. It's a, it's a law. Oh, that it has to be a hundred percent meat, like hundred percent. So he threw it in the, the meat processor and came out the burger. And like, we saw it from beginning to end and it was, 
I, I'm going all over the place, but that's just because that's, it was absolutely amazing. Hey, that sounds Dude. incredible. Getting to customize a burger right now. Bro. It's like, hey, I I just got off prep, bro. It's like, I'm <laughs> hungry. That's I, I asked him, I was like, you have bacon over there? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, throw it on there. Like, all like, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> and then the French, the French fries, like he hand did it in front of us and like had the fries and like oh, fried. Oh, my God. I, that's amazing. Yes, yes. It was like, even the cheat meals out there seem cleaner. Dude, it was unbelievable. <laughs> it, it's unbelievable. Like, I felt great. Even though, like, I was eating, like, crap because of all the fresh ingredients that they used. Like, yeah. it, and it's part of the European laws. I'm not going to get into that. But, like, I actually came back and I was actually lighter than when I left, which is freaking crazy. That's insane. I mean, you probably moved so much. Oh, but... well, yeah. I mean, I only took 95,000 steps on Friday. <laughs> in one day? In one day. Dear you Lord. You didn't see me post that? No, I didn't oh, see shit, that man. One, Yeah, on That's Friday, the crazy. Ultra, 95,000 steps. The next day, oh, as I was, like, I was running around the course, like, doing stuff for my friends. So, like, 25,000 steps. Then the day after that, I had 45,000 steps. It was a big weekend, okay? That's wild. It was a big weekend. Yeah, you burned. Yeah. Just probably burned just a good 50,000. Just a couple of calories. calories. Just, just a couple of calories. Yeah, steps. we didn't count because I was just eating. <laughs> no, yeah. You can't. You literally cannot refill that back up. If you if you burn that many calories, you're going to lose. Yeah, man. And then I, <laughs> once, I, once I started my trek back home, right, I only had one travel snafu. It was in Utah. Our plane broke. Luckily, we're on the ground. Um, okay, I was so, say, yeah, yeah. that sounds alarming. No, no, no. I mean, so in that Air Force, I'm used to it, right? Like planes break all the time. Oh, like I'm yeah. used to it. Mm -hmm. Um, so like half the time, like if you shut it off and turn it back on, it it's fine. But <laughs> not this time. Like most things. Yes, yes, exactly. Restarted. Exactly. So not this time. So we had a little snafu. We stayed in Utah for about eight hours. Finally got home, and I was like, cool. Yes, spend the night in Denver. And I'm like, oh shit, got to start driving to Monster Games, baby. <laughs> so. Um, 10 hours later, uh, I stayed a night in uh, Kansas. It was a nice little Airbnb. But then uh, 10 hours later, uh, driving time, I was in Joplin, Missouri, and we started up our three-day Monster Games CrossFit competition, oh, my first oh. one ever. I did it with Caleb here, and um, it was so fun. It was so fun. Leading into something that makes me uncomfortable, CrossFit. Like A lot of people make fun of CrossFit. I don't like doing Olympic lifts for reps and time like because mm -hmm. olympic lifts i like to be able to brace and all that kind of stuff and that's kind of like the the thing with crossfit that people don't like and i agree with them actually <laughs> but here we are um did a little bit this weekend we did a little bit of crossfit this weekend i don't know where we placed because it didn't matter i was enjoying my time with my friend and we were enjoying the competition atmosphere we made friends we had fun we came out healthy and that's what it's all about oh yeah. once again more hardship <laughs> with good people like, that's what it's all about. Hard shit with good people make memories. Memories enough to freaking, I can write a book someday. Absolutely. And I hope, I hope I do. But, like, I'm telling you. Um, the CrossFit competition, it was fun. It was challenging. It, here's the best part. It gave me something to work on. Right? I, I, was talking to, I was talking to a couple of guys at the end of it. They're like, hey, how'd it go? You know, there's this thing. Um, and how the workouts go, blah, blah, blah. And the last workout was a handstand walk workout. And I'm like, yeah, I, I couldn't get one handstand walk. That's on me because it's, it, a lot of it is like form and repetition and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I told them, I'm just like, guys, like this is awesome. They kind of looked at me and I'm like, this gives me something to work on. Because if I leave a competition and I don't know what I have to work on, I'm not in the proper competition because it didn't push me hard enough. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know you feel that way because you got mm -hmm. second place. So now that gives you something to work on. Yeah. You know, you can make an adjustment here. You make an adjustment there. I come out of this Monster Games, this CrossFit competition that I don't do often with like, oh, a magnifying glass on the holes in my game. And I am thankful for that because now I can fill those holes. Now I can go attack them, right, by creating those goals. Now these goals are going to stretch me into a new human being, right? And I, I'm so excited for that because it, it like threw like four or five logs onto the fire of what I have to work on. Absolutely, bro. Dude, when you said like doing hard shit with good people, having a good time, that I literally was thinking I would add what you just said is <laughs> you, like you've got something to work on and beating your previous self. Like each time that you go into a competition, because I mean, it's super cliche. I, I mean, I would say it's cliche in the bodybuilding community because each competition that you do, 
it doesn't really matter where you place. It's like, hey, I got better than I did last mm -hmm. time because there's going to be different people at each show. So you could have people that have been doing it 10 years that are hitting. They went through their gauntlet mm -hmm. and then you're like, OK, I got better than last time, even though my placing was a little bit behind And that competition with yourself and having those things to work on, like taking the action and getting out there and doing it like we were talking about earlier that like you have to do that to know what you got to work on, too. Exactly. It's like we got that list. It gives you a ground floor. Mm -hmm. It gives you a ground floor and yeah. you can build from there. So I, I, I have this – sorry to cut you off, but I oh, have this good. saying. It's <laughs> um, Everybody talks about a glass ceiling. I fucking hate it because I always say you make your ceiling your floor and you build from there. So I always picture like a little construction worker like getting up to the ceiling like, Ugh. all right, we're through it. Now I'm going to bring – get up. I'm going to lift my ladder and we're going to start climbing to that next ceiling. Right, because you can truly do it. You mentioned it earlier that you can truly do anything if you put your mind to it. Yep. That's right there. You made your ceiling your floor. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna build from here, right? Yeah. So we got to build the next level. Both oh, of yeah. us do. You in the bodybuilding realm, me in the CrossFit realm, because apparently I'm a CrossFitter yeah. now, yeah. and in the Spartan realm, because I'm gonna continue doing a lot of Spartans. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's a perfect way of like describing what we're talking about with momentum. Mm -hmm. It's like you use that momentum to keep breaking through that that glass ceiling that you uh -huh. think that you have, and that's now your bottom. And then that momentum is what allows you to keep going up and to connect it back to like the, the time aspect, like you're gonna have to do that for a long time and you're gonna have to break a lot of glass ceilings. And then when you break through five or six of them, then you see the next one, you're like, Oh man, I can like, I can take this to a whole nother level than I thought I could. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, man, I could actually like, in bodybuilding, like once I win a couple shows out here, it's like, man, I, I could really be Mr. Olympia in classic physique or like whatever, whatever I realize when mm -hmm. I keep breaking those ceilings. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like new ceilings arise each time that you break it and you have another level and you have more levels than you think in the tank. It's oh. just going to take longer than what you think to get there too. Absolutely. And, and here, here's what I want to, I, I'd be amiss if I didn't remind people of this. Like, hey, guys, you're going to fall down. You're going to fall down that ladder. You're going to come up. You're going to try and break through that ceiling, and you're going to on your ass, right? Absolutely. And, and the key is getting back up, getting your bearings around you, and start climbing that ladder again, all right? And, and that's where the time factor comes into play. As we said, over an extended period of time, you're taking those failures. You're taking those lessons. You're taking – a hand from your mentor who might be on the next level than you and they can help pull you up, but it's going to take time. It's going to take messing up. It's going to take success. It, it's just it, a long period of time. And you guys got to remember, here's the thing is that the thing that we call time is freaking made up. Okay. We just needed to know when to be at work. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, let's be real. <laughs> we needed to know like, Hey, I want to go out to eat. Let's call it six o'clock. Six o'clock is a made up word in a made up language from somebody way back in the day. Okay. So time realistically doesn't exist except for something that like kind of like the big ball in the sky kind of like keeps moving and we're circling around at 14,000 uh, miles per hour on this <laughs> weird spear gas ball thing. Right. And like that, if you look at it like that, it's like, oh man, like time really is like just like <laughs> a figment of our imagination that we all agreed is a thing. Yeah. Right. So like, Back in the day, they didn't care about time. They just like, okay, I got to go hunt. I don't care how long I have to hunt. I got to go get some food. And they didn't stop until they got food, right? So if you look at it like that, look at your goals like that. Okay, cool. I got to go get this goal. I don't care how long it's going to take. Oh. I'm going to go get this goal. And like, if you look at it from that aspect, from that way, your life is going to change. Absolutely. You know, and that's why we're here to remind you of that. <laughs> And that mindset will get you through, like you just said, you're going to fall. That, that mindset will get you through those times because, you yeah. know, like, hey, no matter what happens here, uh -huh. I'm going to get that goal. Yeah. And there's going to be times where it's going to suck, where you're going to fall flat on your face. And as long as you keep in the back of your head, it's like, hey, I know no matter what happens here, I'm getting this shit done. Mm -hmm. Like you will go so much farther if you and it might take a lot more time than you think. Speaking about time. Like I want to remind people that because a lot of people think that they're going to reach long goals in a short period of time. And some people think that it's going to take them longer than they think too. It's like in a short period of time, you can get a lot more done. You can get a 
lot more fuel on that fire like you're talking about building that momentum being able to see that next goal a little bit more clearly that freaking it fires me up whenever i get to the next one i'm just like like all right hey, i'm i'm not much closer to the next goal yep. let's go yep <laughs> yep and, and yeah and guys like hopefully in this podcast that you see like hey it's gonna take us a while but it's worth it like the look on his face like when he's talking about his contest and look on his face when he got his second place. Like, I hope you go back on his Instagram and see it. And trust me, like, look on my face when I'm telling you, like, how much this sucks and I'm pumped for it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I hope that came through on the screen or, or through, the, through the audio player. Because, like, honestly, it's, it, it's the best feeling in the world to get to the other side. And as we said earlier, it's worth it. Every single time. Every single time. So, John, I have to ask you, dude, what's next? So next is, so right now I am going into a reverse diet. Okay. So uh, you, depending on how long your diet is, it depends on how long your reverse diet is going to be. Yep. Uh, but mine's going to be 11 weeks. So exactly half of my 22 week actual diet. And I mean, it's real simple, man. It's the same thing as a diet, but in reverse with more calories yeah, adding like more the name yeah yeah <laughs> adding more and more calories to stoke that metabolism so that you can eat more food gain more muscle yeah, yeah buddy get a little bit stronger and then by the time you cut down like you're gonna be shreddy shreddy by the time you cut down yes sir yeah because it kind of goes in peaks and valleys right mm -hmm. and the point of the reverse diet is to stoke that metabolism up get those mm -hmm. calories higher so that you have more to cut the next time that you're able to cut yes yeah. exactly and yeah. you got to do it slowly too mm -hmm. that's that's a huge thing that people will miss post show because your hunger is crazy. Wow. I mean, even if you're and just now post you're eating freaking food that's like you know carb dense and oh, like yeah. sugary and everything <laughs> like that because you haven't had it forever, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't stop. One yeah. day's okay, one meal is okay, but they mm -hmm. don't stop. Exactly. Yeah, that's when people don't stop and continue that binging. That's whenever you can gain 20, 30. You go back to what you were like that pre diet with like that. Week. Yeah, like really fast. And that that that's fat. Like that, mm -hmm. that'll be fat real quick. Oh yeah. It will not, it will not look doesn't good. matter it what supplement you took. Yep. Yep. Your body's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. Your blood pressure goes up because you hold so much water. So it's like, I've had two cheat meals since the, the show and I'm literally holding water in my legs. Like I can feel it. Like whenever I pull my socks down, I'm probably, like, Oh shit. Yeah, you are. <laughs> it's not a ton, but there's a, there's a little bit down there. And I'm yeah, just, there's a line cheap. there around where his socks are supposed to be. <laughs> so it's just because of the water intake, but that's because mm -hmm. carbs that came in and everything like that, just holding yeah. on to it a little bit more. Um, yeah. Just to put in perspective real quick on the reverse diet, I was at 1700 for the last couple of weeks uh -huh. on calories and we're going to 2400. Yep. And after the week or two at 2,400, I'm going to go up to 2,700. And this is just, I'm guessing what my coach is going to do, mm -hmm. probably 2,700. Then after one or two weeks, 3,000. Throwing so just, logs, baby. Throwing mm -hmm. logs. Just Slowly a, stepping just a in couple up. coals hey, at, at a time hey, so it's not too much. I'm so happy that you brought this up because so many people miss it. It's just like, like with our eight-week transformation challenge, we're in the middle of it, right? Mm -hmm. And after it, everybody's just like, yeah, we're done. Boom. And it's like, no. Okay, cool. <laughs> Absolutely. Dude, that's awesome. You just came down. You're probably in a caloric deficit right now. In order to get you back into a caloric surplus, we must first go through maintenance. So we must start throwing. First, it starts with some kindling. Get that metabolism. <laughs> words are hard. Yeah, words are hard. And then we're going to start throwing a couple of logs. That's a 200 calories increase up to a 500 calorie increase. And now, eventually, we're going to have more for you to cut. The next time you decide to go back into that valley, right? Peaks and valleys, exactly. peaks and valleys. Um, and, and a lot of people miss that. So I'm really, really happy that you brought that up. So Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. And that it's probably the hardest part. If you went through a really hard diet, like if you went crazy, if you're planning on winning it's this discipline. challenge or you're planning on going hard, like that, you have to diet essentially for another, I would say at minimum four weeks. If you go really hard during an eight week challenge taking four weeks to reverse diet out. Yeah. So you got to diet for 12 weeks now instead of eight. And that's freaking hard. You yeah. got to mentally put yourself like, Hey, this, like, that's what I always do in prep. Like, mm -hmm. Hey, my diet isn't the 22 weeks of prep. Mm -hmm. It's the 31 weeks with including Woo! my reverse diet. Yep. <laughs> yep. But so that's a gotta, great way to look at it. That's the long term goal. Exactly. Yep. Like if you, when you know that going in, when you have that mindset going in, it's so much easier. Mm -hmm. And, and today, you know, I'm, I'm going hard. I'm, I've been eating a lot of food today, but it's right back on it. Tomorrow. But you are getting more food. So like, that's also a good thing is like, you are getting more calories. You're going to get into your calorie surplus. You know, it's just going to take a little bit more time. 
Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because you had that mindset at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Love and it. it's a it's a little bit bigger jump than most people would do because I'm at such a low body fat. Yeah. Like if you get down to single digits where I would say like six, seven percent or lower, mm -hmm. where like you're you're your body, striated everywhere. Yeah, and you <laughs> and your your body just doesn't want to function anymore. It affects oh, everything. Yes. So it, sure. it's not even necessarily safe to stay down there for very long other than a exactly. week. And that's why the big jump is let's get you back up, let's get you mm -hmm. uh, healthy again and exactly. feeling good again. <laughs> feeling good, not even healthy, feeling good. And then going from there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So most of the time it's just a few hundred calories here and there. But yeah. you gotta gotta get back to a little bit of, a little bit bigger of a bump this time around. Mm -hmm. And then, then we go then we go up by two hundred to five hundred. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I gotta make sure I'm not getting uh getting having those low days getting mad at random shit on my computer. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Uh, that's that's one thing. Just need carbs and don't. caffeine. Just need carbs and that, caffeine. That's all that's I need. Is. That's literally all I need. <laughs> well, dude, that's awesome. For me, um I'm going to Utah next weekend. Um okay. then I get a weekend off. It's been a while. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a, while. a while. And then go to Mexico, like Mexico City, Mexico. Oh, yep. Nice. Back for like a week and a half. Hawaii. And we got Hawaii. Yeah. Yes, so excited. And then back for like two days and I go to West Virginia. So then after that, I have a little bit of a break until mid-September. So this August is absolutely insane for me, but I'm so excited for it. Hell yeah. um, we talk about stretch goals. Like this is physically, this is going to challenge me more than anything that I've ever done. So um, coming off of France, coming off of monster games going right into utah going into mexico like physically i might be unwell <laughs> but i'm gonna take care of myself um because that's what we do right like we exactly. we do the proper mobility we do the proper training sessions my physically my body is strong enough to withhold this it's just the rep like the travel and everything together so yes. um i'm excited for it it's going to make me stretch as a person and once again i'm doing hard shit with good people and like, like it all this. comes back down to that. So I, I'm really, really excited for it. Hell yeah, dude. I'm yeah. excited for you too, bro. That's well, that's amazing. Like you've just been like consistently taking that next level stuff, like hey. taking it to the next level each time. And and, <laughs> and that's just getting started. So there, there's so much stuff on the horizon and we're going to wrap this up right now. But just letting you all know, we're going to tease you a little bit is like there's more to come. So if you're watching this now, like this is just the beginning. This is our ground floor. Like we just did some total badass stuff and we're just getting started. Oh yeah. Baby. Right. So follow along on the journey. You can like comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Um, reach out to us. Like we're happy to help and man, let's make it one hell of a week. Let's do it, baby. Hell yeah, brother. Great work, man. I'm proud of you. Proud of you, bro. All right, y'all take it easy. Love you.